It was giving off huge amounts of energy. Now Marie was on the hunt for an unknown element that emitted a strange radiance, like Becquerel's uranium. These are Marie Curie's actual laboratory notebooks. Look at this one. You can see where the acids have eaten into the cover. Maybe that's where she held it with her thumb. And here we are. This is the 19th of April. She realises she's on the track of a new element, and she thinks she's going to find it with just a 100 grams of pitch blend. And she details, she details herself every step of the way now. With this handful of dirt, Marie stepped into the unknown. Pierre joined his wife in her search for a new element. It was the start of a scientific partnership. Well, they shared a great passion for science and excitement about science. That was what began it. Each brought something to the other that was very valuable. Pierre was a more joyful person, I think, than Marie. Marie had had a very sad childhood and upbringing, and there was a kind of seriousness about her. And I think Pierre leavened Marie in important ways. They started off ridiculously optimistically with just 100 grams of pitch blend. It was the first step in a very long haul. Soon they would be working with tons of the stuff. I'm off to ask an expert what Marie Curie did with this pitch blend. Dr. Alessandra Quadrelli is a chemist here at Cambridge University. So what should we be doing? A pitch blend. Mm -hmm. And um, like Madame Curie did, I want to uh, hunt out a new element. Looks about right. Mary's element was hiding somewhere in this pitch blend, mixed up with lots of other stuff, like a needle in a giant haystack. What you want to do is separate the elements that are in there and keep concentrating your amount of the active element. Isolate the active element. Exactly. Isolate the active element. Right, then, then how do I do that? What are we going to do? We're going to put our 100 grams in here. Now we're going to attack it with acid, which is the first separation step. OK? Yeah. So here I'm pouring carefully, because it's a very active material. Keep adding, keep adding, keep adding. All right. Well, you see all the bubbles. What it means is that the acid is reacting with some of the pitch blend that we've put. So it's yeah. eating out some of the compounds, and it's leaving the other ones. She was testing loads of acids to see which ones would eat away the exactly. unwanted compounds, exactly. just to leave her with a, yeah, with a with, bit of with magic the good left. Stuff. Exactly, but right. sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't work. All right, so it has basically stopped fizzing. So we'll move over there where I have a filter set up. We <coughs> have to pour this over the filter. Yes. And isolate the solid. All right. And you see how clear the filtration is, and all the dark solid that hasn't been attacked by the acid staying over. Now Marie had separated something, but she had to work out where her element was. Was it in the liquid, or was it in the solid? So we have actually separated something. Mm. The first one, the liquid, let's see. No activity. So all of this that does not contain activity can be chucked away. The solid, does show an activity, fantastic, the magic element is here. But the problem here is that you have the magic element and tons of other useless things. So Marie Curie had to repeat this separation over and over and over. With each acid, Marie removed unwanted compounds in her pitch blend and got a step closer to finding her element. The hard slog had just begun. She had no idea what hard times and heartache lay ahead. These, she reckoned, were the happiest days of her life, Madame Curie. <laughs> Bring in tons of... 
smelling pitch blend. Stirring it all round with a ten ton stirring pole. Putting in noxious acids. Days they were that went on happily for years. While she was working very, very long hours, what's really amazing is she was also pregnant through part of this and had a child in the middle of all this, uh, working extremely hard um, in in cold and in soot. Um, and with absolutely no precautions at the time because it was the dangers were not understood. Um, so it was, it was difficult, but it was also very exciting. Marie spent four years homing in on her new element. She had no idea it was one of the most dangerous substances in the world. June the 6th, 1898. 150 times more active than uranium. June the 27th, 1898. 300 times more active than uranium. November the 11th, 1898. 900 times greater than uranium. March the 28th, 1902. Pierre, we got it! At last, Mary's mysterious substance officially existed. Chemical analysis confirmed that she had a brand new element. At night, she and Pierre returned to their workroom. To their delight, as a liquid, it glowed in the dark. Holding hands, they stood transfixed by their luminous bottles that danced around them like fairy lights. They christened their magical substance, radium. 50 tons of water, six tons of chemicals, one ton of pitch blend, gave her six grains of radium. And that was enough to change the world. Mary's radium demonstrated that an element, a pure substance, spontaneously leaked energy. It was unequivocal proof of radioactivity. This wasn't just another element. This was an element that was radioactive. And this was the word that she and Pierre quickly coined, radioactive. That meant that it was giving off energy. Radium caught the imagination of the scientific community. 